Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today Dan and I are going to be showing you how to change the calipers on a C5 Corvette. I'm Gina. You're watching the Corvette Channel. So guys, a few months ago we did the brakes on this car and we were sponsored by Power Stop Brakes, but we and we filmed it, but we had nothing but problems with our our uh, cameras that day and we just really didn't get good footage. Um, we did do another brake video uh, to replace that, but um, with this car we we did ahead and we did the brakes, but. In the meantime, we also had TPS Motorsports. Uh, Mike over there uh, was generous enough to sponsor today's show, and he gave us some powder-coated uh, calipers to be able to put on the car and replace those ugly calipers that come with the car. Um, so you're going to see here just how pretty they are, and we're going to show you how. I'm going to actually Dan is doing most of the work. I'm doing the support for it, um, but and some of the filming. But we got some really good camera angles, and I hope that you really enjoy this. Um, but I just want to be able to say thanks to, to both PowerStop and to Mike over at TPS Motorsports for sponsoring today's video. So you can see here where we're working. We're working on the right rear of the car. Um, of course, we have to take off the uh, whole caliper assembly here first, since we're going to be replacing that. Um, this would be a good time to do a brake job. If you needed to, uh, we just did one on this car about three months ago, so we're not going to do that today. But it is pretty much the same um, steps that you're going to have to go through. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, what you have is you have two 15 millimeter sockets here. One here, one here. One thing that does kind of help sometimes to break these uh, bolts free is I've got the 15 millimeter on here, but if you put a crescent wrench in here, there are two uh, flat spots on it that you can grab with the crescent wrench. Um, that just makes it just a little bit easier for you to break those, those free without spinning them constantly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So guys, just like Dan was saying here, that this is really the same procedure for cha changing the brakes that we're going to be doing here. Um, our sponsor, uh, Power Stop Brakes, they provided the brakes for this, and this was the brake job that uh, I had told you about in one of our other videos that we had a lot of cam camera failure, um, and I just wasn't able to get a good video for that. So uh, this was the brake job that we did, and we ended up doing a Grand Sport uh, video for Power Stop just to make up for this one. But um, so I just wanted to point that out that that they had sponsored these brakes, um, and then TPS Motorsports is the ones that's actually sponsoring uh, today's video for uh, for the the calipers themselves. So I just wanted to get that out there so you guys uh, know who's sponsoring who and, and why. So now that we've got these two bolts free, all we do is just, we're gonna pull the caliper right off. There you go. Just slides right out. We're just gonna tuck it up out of the way for the moment because we still have to get this bracket off. There's one of the brake pads. Um, and that's another thing to point out is, remember which way the brake pads go back in. So we're gonna take this one, set it back here so we know that goes to the inside of the car. This pad here, we're gonna take and put out here so we know that it goes to the outside of the car. That way it's gonna help us keep remember the correct orientation of the brakes or the brake pads for reassembly. So next we got two these big, huge uh, bolts right here are 21 millimeter. Um, make sure that you have that in your tool set first. Remember, a lot of tool sets only come up to 19 millimeter. 
So make sure that you have that 21 before you start this job. There's something else you might want to point out, um, guys, is that we had, re we had taken these brakes apart again a few months ago, like we said. Um, if you've never tore your brakes apart this is the first time, <laughs> uh, you're going to... You're going to be fighting those yeah, nuts. Yeah, you're going to be fighting those bolts. Uh, the General Motors loads those things so heavily um, it usually takes a break of all the brakes. It's pretty ridiculous. So we did this. We, we did three weeks of these for the video where we could be able to get that camera in there for you guys to be able to see it. But you guys are going to need to be able to use a breaker bar if you've never broke those three before. So once you get those two bolts out, this whole assembly comes off. All right, so the next part is going to be down here. This is where it gets a little bit messy. Um, we have to pull this nut off, and that's where the brake line goes into the caliper itself. We're going to bleed some uh, brake fluid on this one. There's no choice on it. Um, this one is a 13 millimeter. So you guys, you want to be able to have like a little drain bucket there handy so that you're not going to lose a lot, but you are going to lose a little bit. So, you know, um, you just want to make sure that you have that. Um, this, and when, once you break this, the, obviously the brakes are going to have to be bled. Um, and it can be done um, by one person, um, but it is so much easier to do it by, with two people. So if you've got a buddy that'll help you, <laughs> more power to you. Yeah. All right. Okay. In hindsight, probably easier to break this while it's still uh, all attached. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And again, part of the job is that you are going to have to bleed the brakes. There's no way around that because there's already brake or there's going to be missing brake fluid from the uh, new caliper that we're putting on. So that's going to, that's got air in it right now. It's going to have to get filled with brake fluid. So you have no choice, but you do have to break or bleed the brakes after you're done. And that's the full removal of it. The next thing we're gonna have to do, we're gonna take the bleeder valve and we're gonna move it over to the new one. Uh, make sure that you do have the correct caliper for that side. And the way you can tell is if you look at these two, you've got this uh, indented section here and that hard line, that's gonna match up if you have the right one for the right side. So you take your 10 millimeter socket, we're going to carefully twist it off, there we go, you want to make sure that you grab the dust cover as well. Once you got the blue valve off the old one. We're going to put it onto the new one. And again, it's 10 millimeter. Remember that because when you're bleeding them, you're going to need 10 millimeter wrench for it. So we're going to put that on. We want to make sure that it's tight, but we want to make, you don't want to over tighten it. You do not want to break those threads off inside of the caliper. All right. Then the last thing that we need to do off the old one is take the uh, the spring back here and we're going to pop that out. 
Pay attention to the way it goes in. You've got these two tabs here. It's just gonna go right in here and pop in. Now we're ready to put it all back together. So now we're ready to put it back together. We got the bracket. That is just going to rest right back here. And again, we're going to use these big, huge 21 millimeter bolts. Once you get the bolts in, again, this 21 millimeter socket, we're just going to tighten it up. For now, I'm just snugging it up. And now once we get everything assembled, then we tighten everything up. Then off the old um, the old bracket, we're gonna take the retaining hardware. Here we go. There's the uh, retaining hardware for the new pads. Throw the new pads on here. And again, in this case, we're reusing the old pads because as you can see, they're pretty much brand new. Okay, so we pull the plunger pin out from the old uh, bracket and put them in the new one. I'm going to grease them up just a little bit so they slide freely. Put that in and then you got to take the cap here. Make sure it pops onto the bracket. There we go. All right, now you can see it's nice on there. Now, if you look right here, I'm not sure how well the cameras can pick this up, but there's a small flat spot right here and a small flat spot right here. Right there is where you're grabbing it with that crescent wrench when I, that I was talking about earlier. We're definitely going to be do that, doing that when we tighten this back up. Now one thing in the uh, powder, I'm assuming it's the powder cutting process. There might be a little bit of... Uh, Grimer, uh, I'm not sure if it's overspray or what it is, but you can feel it when you're putting the pin in. So if you feel that, just feel free to put just a little bit more grease on there and that should help take care of it. You just wanna make sure that, that pin can slide smoothly. And we got the dust cap on, so we're good there.
Now it's time for us to put our brake line back on. All right, so for blending the brakes, what we're gonna do, um, what we've done, you can go out and buy a $50 bleeding brake uh, kit and everything. Um, what we did, just regular, uh, we got about a one liter water bottle. Uh, this is 3 16 inside diameter tubing. Cut a small hole in the cap of the bottle. We've got a little bit of brake fluid in here, so just it won't pull up any air or I'm bleeding this. And just gonna take this and slide it right over the bleeding nipple here. Now, the way that you bleed the brakes is um, this, it can be done as one person, it's not easy. Um, so I've actually got Scott inside the car right now. He's gonna be pumping the brake pedal when I tell him to. And when he pushes it, then I'm gonna open this up. It's gonna push everything out. While he's still holding it, I'm gonna tighten it back up and then he can release. So, uh, let's go ahead and push. Okay, going all the way to the floor. And I'm at the floor. All right. I'm holding it. Re release. All the way to the top. All right. And go ahead and push. Push it down. Starting to get a stiff pedal. Still going down though. Yep. And I'm at the bottom. All right. And release. Up to the top. All right. And go ahead and push. And almost. And I am not at the bottom, but it's holding pressure. All right. And it just went to the floor. Yep. All right. And release. It. All right, go ahead and push. Oh, only went down a little bit. All right. And going to the floor. And we're at the floor. All right, and release. Releasing all the way to the top. All right, so what we're going to look for now. Is now look, it sounds like we've got a lot of the uh, air out of here. We're gonna watch when he pushes it or when I open this up again while he's pushing and see if we see air bubbles in the uh, brake fluid. That's how we're gonna tell if we're full or not. Uh, brake fluid or if there's still air in there. Go ahead and uh, push. Bear with me just a second. I'm gonna add a little bit to the reservoir. That's another key thing is to make sure to keep an eye on the reservoir. Um, you do not want that thing, to, the reservoir to run empty. Otherwise, you'll induce air back into the system. So just make sure that you always check the reservoir. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. All right, go ahead and push. Pushing. Holding pressure. All right. And see, we are seeing no air bubbles, so it looks like we should be good. All right, go ahead and release. Okay, yeah, release. And go ahead and push now. How's it feel? Oh, yeah, good and solid. All right, there you go. All right. So this side is completely done. Put the dust cap back on the uh, bleeder valve and we're just going to tighten everything up and then we'll be done on this side. There we go. All right. 
That's all tightened up. Put these uh, big guys. all nice and cleaned up as best we can. And just a matter of uh, put the shower back on. Drop the car back down, and this side's completely done. All right, now we're on the front end of the car. We're on the left front end, and the reason that we're on the left front already, after just doing the right rear, is on this model, this is a 2002. On this model, that is the bleeding order that you do the brakes in. Um, it does vary year by year. Um, some of them are a little traditional back, back, front, front. Then midway through production, they changed it to where it's back, front, back, front. So that's what we're doing right now. We're coming to the front brake and we're going to do this one. And then after we're done with this, we go back to the back and then back to the front. Um, but for your year, check your uh, manual. Just make sure that you have the right order for your car. They all start in the right rear. That's why I didn't mention it back there. But check your manual to make sure that you have the proper bleeding order. And that's the best way to do the caliper replacement if you only lift one corner of the car at a time. Now on the fronts here, um, learning from my mistake <laughs> on the last one, we're going to go ahead and take off the... Uh, Front brake line first. You really didn't make a mistake. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to get a little leverage to take it loose. Exactly. Yeah. I've got a good mounting solid surface here that I can push against to break it free. Let's see. Oh my God, that was so much easier. <laughs> So again, you do want to have a drip pan underneath you because you are going to bleed brake fluid. Um, and one thing to remember about brake fluid is be careful not to get it on any of the uh, paint of the car because it can eat through the paint. Um, obviously doing this, you are going to get a little bit on the caliper itself on the back side. The back side is not what it shows. So now we're going to take the... Uh, Caliper off here. For taking the calipers off, you don't necessarily have to use the uh, 16 to grab the inner spindle. Sometimes they'll spin on you, sometimes it won't. Um, the biggest time when it can spin on you is when you're breaking it. Um, but again, I just threw it on there just, just because, you know, sometimes it does do it, sometimes it doesn't, so. Yeah, this one feels pretty good here, so I shouldn't need it. There's this caliper here. We're gonna set this in our drip pan for right now because we are gonna pull a couple parts off of that. All 
right. Here's our nice uh, 21 millimeter again. Actually, before I finish pulling that out, let's pull out the brake pads. So again, what we're gonna do is, these pads are almost brand new, so we're not gonna change them. So just remember the orientation of them. Pull it out. This one goes under the car to signify that it's uh, the inside. Pull this one out. Put it on the outside of the car. Now, if you notice the uh, brake mounting hardware, the spring kit, came out with it. It's not a big deal because that's going to have to come out anyways. So... All right, now we can finish taking this bracket off. Yeah, it was good to pull the brake pads out so they don't end up falling into your uh, your oil. <laughs> your brake <laughs> brake fluid. Yeah, yeah. Fluid. the last thing you want to do is get brake fluid on your pads. Yeah. So. All right, some of you may have. Uh, Caught me doing something here on a couple of these bolts, and that is uh, initially starting to uh, turn them by hand right off the get go. Yes, yeah, so we did break the bolts free first before we started the cameras. Yeah. And that just makes it easier for you guys to see. You don't have to see us struggling or anything. These really were not that bad to break free, again, because we just uh, recently changed these um, pads out. But if you've never done a brake job on your car, well, they're going to be really difficult and you probably will need to break a bar and somehow break in, especially these two uh, 21 millimeter bolts free. All right, so now we're at a point where uh, we've got all the old hardware off. Now we're going to take the uh, new bracket and we're going to start transferring things over. First thing we're going to transfer over is these uh, springs here. And to pull these out, all you do is just straight, it's just a straight pull. This little plastic cup will pop off and just straight pull it completely out of the socket. Now you can see this is why you need to. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. This is why you need to put the wrench on there sometimes to hold it because all it does it just slides in and out of here. There's nothing inside of here to keep this in place when you're screwing that bolt in that 15 millimeter that holds the caliper in place. And then we're just going to push it so that this uh, plastic dust cover seals on there. There we go, now it's pushed in. Now we can mount the bracket on. Just one thing to be aware of also, once you take this bracket off, this bracket is the only thing holding your rotor, this part right here, onto the wheel. Um, it's held on by the uh, lug nuts, but it's not bolted to anything whatsoever. So, you can see it kind of flopping around right now, and that's why. All right, get that one started.
again, I'm just going to snug these up just lightly until we get the whole thing assembled. Then I'll come back through and tighten everything up. We have a couple things that we're going to pull off the uh, old caliper here. We've got the uh, bleeder screw right here. And we've got the uh, metal spring right here. Now that just pushes out from the back. I mean, it's literally just pops out. This right here is a bleeder valve. This one is going to be a 10 millimeter. There we go. And again, we do want to make sure that we uh, keep the dust cap on there when we pull this out. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is put the uh, new bleeder valve in there. Again, we want to tight. Actually, for this part, we're just going to snug it up because we're going to be opening and closing this constantly when we're bleeding it. So, yeah, there's no real point to really tighten it right now. Now, again, you can see that there's a ridge right here. And the purpose of that ridge is to keep the brake line, the square housing of the brake line, to keep it solid in one place. <sighs> there we go. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, Pads back in here. The spring that uh, wanted to fall out up here, we'll pop that back in. Got both pads back in. Now, there's that spring that we popped out from the uh, center of the caliper on the other one. That's gonna pop right back in into the new caliper. Hey, at least I kept it from taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we almost got it there. There we go. That was there we go. That's good right there. <laughs> you okay. guys trying to get this camera up there where you guys can get this angle has been challenging to say the least. And every time we go to move something around, the GoPro tries, tries to take a swan dive right into the brake fluid. <laughs> So um, we've had that happen a couple of times. Um, I, I very well, depending on my mood when we go to edit this, I very well may put that as some bloopers at the end of the video. Um, <laughs> it was the uh, very first time I did it. It was pretty funny. Yeah, and the other part that doesn't help it is me trying to maneuver stuff so that it can be seen by the camera. Right. And that's kind of what's knocking it over too sometimes. So. Yeah. You guys are getting some really, I'm, I'm able to watch what the camera can see as we're filming this, and I know that you guys are getting some really good footage. 
Uh, Dan, on the other hand, he can't see half of what you guys are seeing. He's, he's doing I'm like working a, blind here yeah. so you guys can see, yes. <laughs> so, From my position where I'm yeah. at, I know if I reach my head in there so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to be blocking the camera. So, yeah, I'm working blind so you guys can see. So, yep. so it's not that I don't know what I'm doing. It's a matter of <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> probably should have mentioned that at the very beginning of the video because I don't know people are watching this and going, man, he's he's like he's like right next to the hole but he can't seem to find it. Oh, <laughs> what, what, this isn't working. Why is that? Well, it's because he can't. He's honestly can't see. Uh, he's, you can see him right now reaching around trying to be able to see see what's going on there. But we decided to try to do this camera angle to be able to get you guys a lot better view. It's working great for you guys, but it, <laughs> he's bumped his head a few times. He's done a bunch of different stuff here, but it is working out really well as far as what I can tell from what I'm seeing from the monitor. All I can say is there's a couple of things that have happened on camera that better not make the blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> you can see as I'm trying to tighten this, so I'm trying to tighten this. You can see that inner sleeve just spinning. And that's exactly why we put the uh, Crescent Ranch or the 16 millimeter on there so that we can tighten that. another perfect example of, of Dan trying to keep his head out of the way so you guys can see. Normally you would be able to turn the wheel, you, you know, you could turn it out of your way so you can see, um, or you could reach in with your head and be able to look right around it, but he's trying to keep himself out of the camera. So it does make it a lot harder. So uh, the sacrifices we yeah. make with our personal safety, it's only breaks. <laughs> Just so you guys can get a great viewing experience. Okay, now it's bleeding time. Alright. So now And I don't mean my own blood. There you go. <laughs> so our reservoir, um, before we started this side of it guys, I went ahead and I tapped off the reservoir so it's full. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get in the car. And when Dan tells me go ahead and push the brake pedal, I will. All right, so again, I mean, we're going to use the same bottle that we had before. Uh, we can keep the same brake fluid in there. Um, we don't need to top it off for anything. Should still be good. Just make sure that the hose is all the way on there. Go ahead and uh, push it, Scott. Okay. It's going down to the floor. All right. See all those air bubbles going in? That's the air coming out of the line here. All right. So go ahead and release. Releasing it. All right. Go ahead and push again. All the way going down to the floor. 
floor, slowing down, not to the floor yet. I'm almost to the floor now. Alright. Tighten back up. Release. Releasing all the way. Tighten. Or push. Oh, a couple bubbles, but not much. All right, go ahead and release. Okay. All right, push again. Pushing down. And there she goes to the floor. And All right, release. Releasing. All right, go ahead and push again. Pushing down. How's it feel? It's getting hard. It's getting hard? Yeah, it's hard now. All right, go ahead and release. All right, push one more time. And she feels good and solid. All righty. Release. Yep, release. We're done. There we go. All right, one thing you guys couldn't see the last time that we did it that I wanted to make sure that you could see was the air actually bleeding out of the uh, hose, out of the lines, into the brake fluid. And this time we got that good on camera, I believe. Yeah, yeah, you definitely got so. it. So. All right, then uh, the only thing left to do on this one is put the uh, tire on and drop it back down. So we're done on this side. Alright, there you go, there you have it. Um, I think that the uh, new calipers on there look absolutely fantastic to change the look of the car. Thank you so much again to the guys over at TPS Motorsports, especially Mike. Without his support, without his sponsorship, we wouldn't be able to bring these videos to you guys. So again, so much thanks to Mike over at TPS Motorsports. Um, down below, you'll see a link to their website. And I hope you found the video informative. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. If you like what you saw today, please hit subscribe and hit the like button. Also, be sure to hit that bell so you will be alerted to our next uploads.